Hi everyone, my name is Sabrina Balsamo, and today I will be discussing refeeding syndrome. In my presentation today, I will be briefly discussing the overview, consequences, and avoidance of refeeding syndrome. So what is refeeding syndrome? When malnourished patients undergo the process of refeeding, a series of complications can occur. These complications can typically include metabolic abnormalities, electrolyte imbalance, clinical symptoms, and more. The American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, or ASPEN, defines refeeding syndrome as either or both of the following. A decrease in the serum levels of phosphorus, potassium, and or magnesium, or organ dysfunction resulting from a decrease in those serum levels or due to a thiamine deficiency that occurs within five days of reintroduction of calories. Here I have the pathophysiology of refeeding syndrome. This typically starts with patients not receiving adequate nutrition. This could be due to the inability to consume food on their own, a complication in their disease state, or an eating disorder such as anorexia or bulimia. Next, starvation occurs. This could also be associated with a reduced intake of carbohydrates, which would then lead to decreased insulin secretion. This decrease would then lead to fat and protein stores being catabolized to produce energy in the body. And a result of this would be intracellular loss of electrolytes, most particularly phosphate. Here I have listed common criteria for patients who may be at risk for developing refeeding syndrome. If the patient has a body max index or BMI of 16 or under, if the patient has lost more than 15% of their total body weight in the past three to six months, if the patient has had little to no food for at least 10 days, or if they have low levels of phosphorus, potassium, or magnesium, which can usually be measured by a blood draw. Furthermore, patients who have had a past medical history of anorexia can be at significant risk of refeeding syndrome if they meet two or more of the following criteria. A BMI under 18.5, weight loss of at least 10% of their total body weight in the last three to six months, if they've had little to no food in the last five days, or if they have a history of alcoholism or drug misuse, particularly insulin, chemotherapy drugs, diuretics, or antacids. Patients with anorexia who also suffer from chronic alcoholism, cancer, uncontrolled diabetes, or who have had recent surgery can be at an even higher risk for developing refeeding syndrome. On this slide, I have some pictures to demonstrate the common risk factors of refeeding syndrome. So shown I have a person with a low BMI, a very small portion meal, alcohol abuse, and the requirement of a nasogastric feeding tube. Refeeding syndrome is extremely predictable when restarting nutrition, and here I have the signs and symptoms that may indicate when refeeding syndrome is taking place. Following malnutrition and shortly into the refeeding process, there may be signs of fatigue, weakness, confusion, difficulty breathing, abnormally high blood pressure, abnormal sodium levels, seizures, anemia, increased heartbeat, edema, rapid weight gain from fluid retention, heart failure, vitamin deficiencies, or a coma. So what are the consequences of refeeding syndrome? Consequences can include, but are not limited to, hyperglycemia or high blood sugar, vitamin deficiencies, or electrolyte imbalances. Common electrolyte imbalances that may occur include hypophosphatemia or low phosphate levels, hypomagnesia or low magnesium levels, hypokalemia or low potassium levels, hyponatremia or low sodium levels, and hypocalcemia or low calcium levels. Of these, phosphorus is the most critical electrolyte to look out for since the intake of carbohydrates leads to insulin release, which leads to the uptake of phosphate. But when there is not enough phosphate, hypoxia, myocardial dysfunction, or respiratory failure can occur. Shifts in these electrolytes can lead to serious complications such as seizures, heart failure, comas, and in some instances, death. Refeeding syndrome can be fatal when complications go unnoticed for too long, if the electrolyte imbalance is not corrected, or if serious complications occur too quickly. 
Here I have just a little cartoon to show the differences of the body in homeostasis, starvation, and in refeeding syndrome. And the little red things represent insulin and the blowfish represents the body's cells. So at homeostasis, there is a balance between electrolytes, vitamins, insulin, and fluids. In starvation, the insulin and electrolyte levels fall. And in refeeding syndrome, once given carbohydrates, there is a surge of insulin, which results in increased metabolic activities. Finally, I will discuss how refeeding syndrome can be avoided. Here I have listed some methods of avoidance and management. One way to avoid refeeding syndrome is by doctors refeeding patients slowly after they have not had nutritional intake for five or more days. The patient should start off with having 1,000 calories per day and increase by 20 calories each day afterwards. Another way to avoid refeeding syndrome is by monitoring patients' weight, vital signs, fluid shifts, and electrolytes very carefully. Important monitoring parameters would include the BMI of the patient, the heart rate, blood pressure, and phosphate, calcium, magnesium, and potassium levels. Lastly, the patient should be taking oral vitamins and minerals, if possible, to try to avoid potential electrolyte imbalances. A critical vitamin that should be administered to patients at risk for refeeding syndrome is thiamine, as it is an essential coenzyme in carbohydrate metabolism. And the photos I have on the slide show an electrolyte test in the top left side and a thiamine structure on the bottom left side. And here I just listed the resources that I used for my presentation, including the information, photos, and slide set. And that is all I have for today. Thank you for listening to my presentation. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach me at my UConn email that I have posted on the slide. Thank you.